All right, so um, I'd like to talk a little bit today about social annotation in the classroom, uh, and particularly about the platform hypothesis. So that's the word hypothesis with a dot uh, between the next to last S and the IS. Um, hypothesis is a wonderful nonprofit um, organization that has devised an annotation tool that's made for annotating almost anything on the open web. Uh, it's a very powerful tool for um, everyday people uh, doing their whatever they read on the web. Uh, it's especially though useful I think for the classroom and I'll explain why. I think it's helpful to think in terms of uh, with all educational technology and really all pedagogy to think in terms of what your problem is, if you can really con uh, clearly conceptualize the problem, I think it's easier to figure out what the solution is and, and think about that in a clear way. And in this case, uh, the problem I think is a very common problem, which is to think about how to ensure that students are reading at all, first of all, that they're actually doing their homework, uh, but more than that, that they're reading in a rigorous way and that they're reading in the way that you want them to read. And uh, in my 10, 15 years of teaching literature, um, I've always felt that that period in which the students take the assignment, go home, sit in their garret, and and spend time with the text is always something of a black box. Uh, I, I have some evidence about what goes on there when they come back to their seminars or they write their papers or write their informal responses, but what really happens as they're engaging with the text is a bit mysterious um, in ways that can be problematic, especially with uh, theoretically dense texts with formally inventive texts that um, are intimidating to students, which is a lot of what I teach. So the problem is helping students, supporting students, and just learning about what happens when an individual student engages with um, an individual text. And hypothesis represents an interesting solution, I think, to that problem for two major reasons. One is that when students sit down with the text in electronic form, and they, they start to use the tool, and I'll explain the mechanics of the tool in a moment, but when they sit down and use that tool, they um, do the same thing that students have done for centuries and millennia, which is to jot down notes in the margin of their text, but they're doing so um, in a way that uses the affordances of the web to do this in a publicly visible way. Uh, so I can see the marginalia that they make in the text, um, and so it comes a little bit out of that black box and into, into consciousness. The second aspect, and this is even the more powerful uh, factor, I think, is that the students can, if you configure the tool the right way, see each other's work. And so um, that was, puts the social in social annotation, the fact that um, any given student can see the work appears also in the margin and thus create the same kind of dynamic, interactive, conversational space, informal uh, informal response space that happens in the seminar hour and kind of port that energy out into this um, asynchronous time and space uh, of, of homework, if you will, um, or what we used to think of as homework. So this is useful in myriad ways, uh, ways that are both objective and subjective. It allows new possibilities for assignments where um, I could give students uh, questions or structured responses by kind of seeding the text with um, with questions that students can answer. Um, it also has a very powerful subjective dimension, uh, by which I mean uh, helping students with the kind of anxiety um, an overwhelmingness of a new text, especially, again, a kind of um, theoretically dense, philosophically rich, formally experimental text that doesn't have obvious kind of handholds and on-ramps. Um, using this uh, sort of technique of social annotation, I think, brings the text a little bit closer to students. It allows me to provide some of that infrastructure, some of that scaffolding or, or um, handholds in the text by kind of um, preceding the text with some apparatus to kind of help them figure out what they need to, to pay attention to. Um, even more importantly, I think the very fact that they can see each other in that text in real time uh, LA's anxieties. Uh, one always has this feeling of almost you know, imposter syndrome that, that this text wasn't written for me, that I can't get it, that I can't do it, or that I'm missing something that everyone else is getting. I think uh, using social annotation um, techniques and technologies allow students to see, again, in real time as it unfolds in those hours in which the, the homework is getting done, other students semi-getting it or not getting it. Um, uh, they can sort of help each other. They can make comments on each other's comments in the margin and create this kind of little community around the text um, that, again, 
uh, can feed into the same kind of energy that occurs in the seminar. So another advantage of hypothesis is that it is extremely flexible um, and useful for people working in a wide range of disciplines and uh, for a wide range of applications even within a given course or a given discipline. Um, it is uh, wonderful for literary criticism, which is my field, uh, where a lot of students are convening around a text and reading it very intensively together. Um, I think that it's equally useful, and this is kind of the main utility of the tool, I think, uh, in any situation in which students are trying to read something closely, where they're trying to analyze an argument, where they're trying to um, analyze the form of a piece of writing in any uh, shape, form, or fashion. Uh, basically, any text where you would be tempted to or obliged to kind of pull out your pencil and highlight, underline, jot down notes, argue with the, the author, I think uh, that is what this tool does. Uh, I think it also lends itself to other possibilities, however, that go beyond this kind of simple uh, marginalizing um, or simple jotting in the margin. Uh, I have used it for um, kind of structured responses, so the, the instructor can add comments to a text or add questions to a text that students are then uh, encouraged to kind of respond to. Uh, the tool um, also supports threaded discussion, meaning that uh, one can comment on a comment. One can also use the tool for more creative assignments. Uh, I have, for example, in my pedagogy, done uh, role-playing exercises with hypothesis, uh, where students annotated uh, T.S. Eliot's famous 1922 poem, The Wasteland, by uh, sort of playing the role of reviewers of the poem in the 1920s, kind of the first wave of public readers of the text. And so um, they got to play a persona and actually um, include quotes from research they had done from actual reviews of the poem and kind of embed that in the poem. Another project I've done with students that is a little bit um, out of the box is having students create an annotated edition of a text using hypothesis. So I took a public domain text, in this case I think it was a novella by Melville, and had the students do some research on the text and add the kind of notes that you would see in a Norton Critical Edition, uh, which gave them a sense of what is involved in the kind of editorial work in the discipline. So there are many ways uh, beyond just sort of base level uh, scribbling in the margins that one can use this tool uh, and use this tool in ways that especially um, exploit its ability to bring people together in this kind of social way around a text. So how do you actually get this tool up and running? Um, one of the advantages of Hypothesis is that it's very uh, sort of skinny, it's very minimalist, it's very simple. Uh, so you navigate to Hypothesis, the word Hypothesis with a dot before the trailing IS. Uh, the URL I think is right here. And uh, it's a free, easy sign up. Um, and once students just create a username and a password, uh, they're up and going. Uh, there are There's a little bit of nuance uh, to, to getting it up and going in your particular browser, um, but there are various ways, pathways to, to get the tool plugged into any given text. Um, and in my experience, it's very, very simple for students uh, these days to figure out um, something on this level. So uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes for each individual user and you're up and going. Um, and I've been very um, pleased to see how easy and intuitive it is for students to navigate it and kind of get onboarded to the whole experience. So we've talked about what hypothesis is uh, and we've talked about some potential uses for it. Now I just want to walk through in a very simple fashion how you actually use the platform. So I'm going to assume for the purposes of this demonstration that you have already navigated to hypothesis. Uh, you've created an account which is very simple um, and that you have installed this extension into the Chrome browser. Hypothesis does work perfectly well with Firefox, Safari, other browsers, but it doesn't have a dedicated extension for those browsers. Um, and I'll leave it to you to read the documentation if you want to figure that out. It's very simple. Um, but uh, for Chrome, it's even simpler in the sense that you have this handy extension that pops up. Uh, whenever you navigate to uh, a text, you can click on um, the, the Hypothesis extension. Uh, I had actually had it enabled before, and, and uh, so now I'm disabling it, and now I'm going to click it to enable it again, as if you're coming to something fresh for the first time. You'll see that these tools here pop out in the upper right-hand corner of your browser, and you can click on this arrow to pop out the thread of comments that attach to the particular text that you have open. So, 
Uh, first, you can see what other commenters have, ma have made, have said about this particular text. You can also, more importantly, make your own comments. So I'm going to highlight a piece of text, click annotate, and it's prompting me that I must be logged in to create annotations, which I forgot to do, so I'll do that very quickly. Now I'm logged in. I click annotate and I make a comment. I'll also note that you can add tags. Uh, tags can be useful to, uh, of course, um, allude to whatever categories that your comment might fit into. Uh, for teaching purposes, I found it very helpful to create a standard tag for my class. Uh, so let's pretend that I'm teaching a, a class um, uh, English 399. Um, and I'll put my name to it and I'll have all of my students use the standard tag so that as the class proceeds I can pull all the comments made uh, from a certain class uh, in, one, in one feed so I can see what all the students are writing. Finally, um, I will post to the public. I'll also note that you can comment on comments. So see uh, here you can click on show replies and you can see what other students or commenters have said about the original comment. Uh, you can also see the comment that I've made on a prior student comment. You can comment on comments. You can comment on comments on comments. So you see that it supports threading. Um, the only other thing that I'll mention is that it's possible to include uh, any kind of me uh, multimedia content in your comments. So sometimes students will kind of take this in a meme culture direction uh, where they'll include little uh, uh, GIFs or images or sound files or other kinds of things in the comments that may or may not be useful for you, uh, but uh, it, it, it does speak to how flexible the tool is. Um, you can include links to other material also as this student here um, has kind of glossed what smelting means in the text Benito Sereno. At any rate, I hope this gives you some sense of the tool uh, and what it can do. There's a lot more documentation on Hypothesis, uh, which is hypothesis.is, and uh, if you want to know more about it, feel free to contact me. Thank you.